Job was righteous and a Gentile. In the land of Uz, modern-day Saudi Arabia, there lived a man whose name was Job, Job 1 verse 1. Job was not an Israelite. His non-Israelite status explains the absence of many key theological elements in the book, including law, covenant, temple, and reference to Yahweh, according to the NIV Cultural Background Study Bible. Other than being from UZ, the first thing the Bible tells us about Job is that he was righteous and godly, blameless and upright, a man who feared God and shunned evil, Job 1 verse 2. One might assume from these first two verses that Job was a simple man of humble means because it's a rare person whose heart is fixed on God and also has everything this life has to offer. But Job was a very rich and great man by the world's standards. Job was wealthy. He had ten children, many servants, and his livestock numbered in the thousands. He was the greatest man among all the people of the East, Job 1 verse 3 great by man's standards and by God's. Incredible. We can surmise that every need Job had was met and every desire was fulfilled. Job 1 verses 4 to 5 tells us that Job's sons were also rich and would annually, on their birthdays, invite their sisters to partake with them in lavish feasts lasting for days. Job served as the family priest. He feared God so much that he made sure his children were purified following the feasts in case, in their revelry, they sinned against God. Early in the morning he would sacrifice a burnt offering for each of them, thinking, perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's regular custom, Job 1 verse 5. Job's life, depicted in the exposition of the story, is picture perfect. The unknown author is depicting the main character's goodness and innocence, setting the audience up for the climax in which Satan is granted permission by the Lord to test Job's faith and faithfulness. Does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied, Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hands, so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. But now stretch out your hand and strike everything he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, Very well, then, everything he has is in your power, but on the man himself do not lay a finger, Job 1 verses 9 to 12. Skin for skin, Satan replied, A man will give all he has for his own life, but now stretch out your hand and strike his flesh and bones, and he will surely curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, Very well, then, he is in your hands, but you must spare his life, Job 2 verses 4 to 6. Innocent suffering was common in other ancient Near Eastern stories. In the Babylonian Theodicy, circa 1000 BC, a character similar to Job discusses his suffering with his friends. According to Zondervan's Cultural Background Study Bible, the sufferer expresses this wish, May the God who has cast me off grant help, may the goddess who has, forsaken me, take pity. In the polytheistic religions of the ancient Near East, innocent suffering could be attributed to another deity or to demons. There were protective deities to whom one could turn when the main deities could no longer be relied upon. For Job, the situation is more complicated. If there is only one God, what do you do if he has become your enemy?